Good morning. Um, this is day 10 of my energy drink withdrawal program. Day 10, so T minus 20. Let me have a sip right now. Still pretty good. Definitely getting a little weaker. Um, no problems yesterday. Again, I had a few uh, temptations to drink an energy drink and again last night I just drank some sweetened water basically um, put some Kool-Aid in some water and drank that and it got me through it so I may be doing that more and more as time goes on again I don't want to drink a lot of sweetened stuff but um, that's what I'm thinking uh, what else no physical effects no headaches or anything to speak of So I've basically cut down, this is day 10, so I've cut down my caffeine intake by one third or 33, 33% um, since I started and have had no physical problems. Again, I, I think it'll start toward, more towards the end of the program. There have been a few psychological things where I want more, uh, but nothing, nothing physical. I talked to my brother yesterday, and uh, he's a doctor. One of the he he thought it was a pretty interesting project. And one of the things he said is, "Why did I pick 30 days to basically cut down the uh, strength of the drinks?" And there's no magic reason for 30. Uh, I pick. I wanted something that was divisible, dividable, that could be divided into 60, because the energy drink shots were 60 milliliters. And so if I do 30 days, it's easy to measure out two milliliter drops. Um, and another reason, and 30 is sort of a round number. Uh, it's a lunar cycle. There's a certain natural state to, th to the number 30. And I could fit 30 bottles in my refrigerator. I don't know. There's a couple reasons I did 30. But the bottom line is there's no science to the number 30. And I called it the T minus 30 program. But you could... If you wanted to make it easy to measure into the uh, uh, into each bottle, the amount, there's a lot of numbers dividable that can be divided into 60. You could do it over 60 days and just decline by one milliliter. You could do it over 30 days, which I did. You could do it over uh, 20 days and just decline by three milliliters each time. You could uh, do it over 15 days by dividing declining by 4 milliliters, uh, 12 days, 5 milliliters, 10 days, 6 milliliters, uh, 6 days, 10 milliliters, 3 days, 15 milliliters. So if you're doing this program and say, well, this is going way too slow, um, I want to be finished off caffeine in, in uh, 10 days. I don't want to wait 30 days. There's a slight adjustment to the measuring process into the drinks, and I, I think I'll leave it in the description field of this field on how to do that. Um, I'm finding over 30 days, I'm finding it's working out pretty good over 30 days. It's basically a imperceptible drop in strength of the drinks every day. So it's working out fine, and I'm in no real rush to, I've been drinking these things for these for 10 years and coffee for, you know, 25 years or more. So there's no real rush to get off the caffeine. So might as well do it as slowly and as gradually as, as possible. There's also no work involved. I mean, there's the initial work of mixing up the drinks, which will take you an hour. Well, you just go to the store, you buy a case of the energy shots and a case of the water and I show you how to mix them up so it, it doesn't really take you much time to prepare the drinks and then it's pretty effortless. I mean I'm providing, it's, it's, I'm putting forth some effort because I'm doing these videos but you at home, you know, once you make the drinks you just throw them into the fridge or and just drink them. So that's a long circuitous answer to why pick 30. You don't have to pick 30, but it seems to be working, working for me.
Okay, I got a little timer here so I know where I am. Oops. Wow, I'm talking a lot. Okay, so this section was the natural history of caffeine. Very interesting stuff. Um, there's two sections, caffeine in the laboratory and uh, caffeine in the plant. And I think I'll just make this a long video and I may stop in the middle. Um, the caffeine in the laboratory, uh, is this the section I read? Um, well, here's an interesting little thing I'll read. This shows how caffeine works in your body. Um, because caffeine is water soluble and passes easily through all cell membranes, it is quickly and completely absorbed from the stomach and intestines into the bloodstream, which carries it to all the organs. This means that soon after you finish your first cup of coffee, tea, or tea, caffeine will be present in virtually every cell of your body. Caffeine's stimulating effects largely depend on its power to infiltrate the central nervous system. This infiltration can be accomplished by crossing the blood-brain barrier, a defensive mechanism that protects the central nervous system from biological or chemical exposure by preventing large molecules, such as viruses, from entering the brain. So, this is just the delivery mechanism. The caffeine molecule in here uh, is water soluble. So it, once it enters your system, once it, you drink it, gets into your stomach and there's no real barrier for the caffeine molecule to just go all the way through your body. So it happens very quickly. And also the blood to get into your brain, there's normal things that protect molecules but the caffeine molecule can just get right through there so it it um, has a pretty quick uh, this timer is a little distracting but um, it has a quick action into your brain okay I'm gonna stop this video and then I'm gonna start up another one to finish it to finish all right, thanks. Okay, this is part two of today's video. Today, by the way, is uh, May 5th. It's about seven in the morning. And I was talking about this, the natural history of caffeine, part four of this book. And I first talked about how this particular drug is easily permeable through all the cells of the body. That's one of the uh, things that makes it so powerful and now I want to talk about the so so it's, it can easily get into your brain and, and other uh, parts of your body the other thing is the mechanism of action the current theory and I want to get into this more in later videos I'm just learning about it now but it sounds real interesting so I may be a little bit off because I, I sort of just skimmed the section is the caffeine gets into your brain and there's something called, pretty quickly, as I said before, and there's something called adenosine, which is a molecule that binds into some receptors in your brain. And, and without caffeine, normally that keeps your mood down, it keeps you sleepy. Um, it's sort of associated with sleep and relaxation. And when you drink the caffeine, it quickly gets into your body, quickly gets into your brain, and it mimics, the caffeine molecule mimics this adenosine molecule. And so gets in where the adenosine would normally get in. And so any sleepy feelings, your body is not allowed to have them because this caffeine molecule has replaced it. And so you get more animated. Um, and uh, that's the mechanism of how this thing works, how the drug works. Basically the caffeine jumps into where this other molecule would normally be, this adenosine molecule, and so you can't relax basically. 
um, and also in a variety of things start happening after that. Dopamine, I guess, is released. Your, uh, your adrenal glands start kicking in, so you get a fight or fight response. So I want to go into that more over the course of this program, but I just want to throw that out there right now as that's the mechanism. Or there's a variety of mechanisms, but that's one that um, is considered to be pretty important. And finally, I just want to talk, there was something about caffeine. What is caffeine in a plant? Caffeine in the coffee plant, the tea plant, and a variety of other plants, although those are the two main ones, how they enter our uh, world. I don't know if sip. I've got to block those adenosine molecules so that I can wake up. Um, the coffee... The caffeine in the plant kingdom is basically a poison. Plants develop caffeine, have caffeine. They're, they're a fungicide, uh, antibiotic, antifungal, and, they, and pest killing. So they basically, they're like a pesticide. Uh, so plants develop them so that when bugs eat the plant, they basically die or become infertile. So that's their nature in um, the plant kingdom. They were developed as a poison, basically. But once, what's one person's poison is not as, you know, somebody else's pleasure, I guess. So we're drinking plant poison. There's a, there's a famous picture of a spi these are spider webs under a variety of drugs. Marijuana, benzedrine, chloral hydrate, and caffeine. And this is a fairly famous picture. And it shows that the, the spider creates the most crazy web under caffeine. Which shows that obviously it's a poison um, to, the, to a bug anyway. Ooh. Okay, and then they talk a little bit about the various plants, which I won't get into now, coffee and tea, the tea bush, the coffee bush, and, and the uh, cocoa bush. All right, I'm a little frenetic today, but just, uh, frantic. Um, the next section, I think, will be the most interesting to everyone, to me and to everyone. Although this section, although I went through it pretty quickly, was interesting to me, too, the, just the mechanism the fact that caffeine is a poison and the, the mechanism of how it affects our brains to me is very interesting. The next section will be caffeine and health. So I'll try to read that today and go over some points about that tomorrow. Okay, today was a long video, but uh, thanks for watching.